2006 Dodge Dakota with the 4.7. <clears throat> issue is it's got some drivability issues. Uh, it shifts weird sometimes. It feels like it's stuck in like second or third gear, I believe third gear for a limp mode. And you can see, it's kind of hard to see here at the sun, but the engine light's on. We're doing a full system scan. Um, what we'll do now is I'll continue to scan and we'll see what's going on with this truck. All right, so hit report. PCM, lost comment to TCM. And I believe on these trucks, the PCM and TCM is one module. It's just partitioned inside of it. Transmission mill request, turn the light on. That's why your engine light's on right there. And then PCM internal dual port RAM communication failure. And then the TCM, transmission high temperature aperation activated. 2-4 pressure switch, line pressure high, overdrive pressure, underdrive pressure, rationality. TCM power input low. That's going to be a key code, I bet. And then... 4C pressure switch rationality, ABS, lost come with ECM, PCM, original VIN mismatch, vehicle configuration, airbag, impossible missing ECU network data, impossible missing vehicle configuration data, central gateway, left low beam control circuit, I don't care about that, it's active, probably a bad bulb, store lost com with ECM and TCM. Do we have com with everything now? So I'm going to do now, and it drives fine right now. I'm going to turn key on engine off. I'm gonna erase everything, and then we're gonna see what comes back and drive it around. Let's see if we can get the problem to actually act up while we're doing this, and go from there. All right, we've cleared everything. The only code in here is in the, well, there's two in the PC, there's one in the PCM in the central gateway. Let's see what's in the PCM here. And clear that one. Instead of doing a quick erase, we'll go into the module and clear it itself. Unless it's an active code, then it's not going to clear. So let's see what this one is in the PCM. Well, we're good there. Never mind, it's not there. Yeah, central gateway. So central gateway has one code, left low beam control circuit. That's just probably a bulb or something. Don't care about that. So everything's good. We're going to go ahead and start it back up. Driving around trying to get it to act up and rescan for colds. So now we're driving it, it's not in limp mode, it's shifting fine. I'm just monitoring transmission temp because this had an over temp condition. I don't think it has an over temp condition. That's just because I think there's a voltage, supply voltage, or ground issue going on to this. So that beat me just my seatbelt. So we're going to continue to drive it here and go from there. I already drove it around a while up to engine operating temp. Temp's 124 degrees there for transmission temp. I turn it off, turn key on engine off. Kind of weird that it shows negative three degrees. Start it up, still shows negative three. Still shows negative three, even though it's running. Then it jumps up to 127. Just thought that was kind of weird. Now we're gonna go ahead and read codes. It's still driving though, no drivability issues that I noticed. Let's we'll see if you got any colds now. Again, sorry about the glare. Yeah, we got colds now. 2 4, 2 C pressure switch, line pressure high, overdrive, underdrive. TCM power input low, that's the key one, 882 and 988. So we need to look at this 882 one. It's like it's not getting enough power. And it's, it's like we're getting low power to it or background or something to the TCM. And then we're getting all these false colds because of a power issue, which is going to screw up everything else in there. What we do now is we do a full system scan, and uh, we'll rescan it for full system, and go from there. No engine light on yet, though. Alrighty, so full system scan. More colds in there, so you go to report PCM. There's the P0700, which is gonna eventually, it says mill request, hasn't turned it on yet. It'll probably two trip detection. Probably a type B DTC, so that'll turn on eventually. Then the TCM, the codes we already talked about, the one we're gonna go after is the power input low. 
because you have a power input low, you're going to have all kinds of other issues. ABS loss come with ECM, PCM, airbag, impossible signal, missing ECU network data, network configuration data, central gateway, don't care about the low beam. And drive a little bit more, it's not in limp mode yet, a reduced power mode, or stuck in third gear I guess it would be. And we're going to do a little bit more drivability tests and go from there. Well, I drove a little bit more and now we're stuck in second or I believe third gear actually. So I'm in drive. That's we're not even, we're barely moving, we're stuck in gear. Recycle the key here. Now we're back in first gear. So let's see if you go, because it reset everything, let's uh, drive around and see if it goes back to that state. Well, I pulled over, shut it off, restarted it, now we're stuck in third gear again. I'm gonna drive it, I'll reset it one more time. I'll drive it back to the shop, and we'll read codes and go from there. Well, as I'm driving back to the shop, the engine light finally just popped on. Scanning for more codes. So yeah, all kinds of issues for sure. We'll see what codes are back in the ECM, TCM, all that stuff here. We well, think eventually we're gonna lose calm with the PCM, TCM, maybe. PCM to SIM 700, if you turn the mill on. Which actually turned the engine light on this time. Like I said, it's probably a two trip detection. All well, your transmission codes again, we got to look at the power one. East lost come with ECM for the ABS. Same stuff. So I'm going to reset it and drive one more time, get it back in first, and see if we lose any comp to the ECM TCM. All right, I drove it some more. Another code in the TCM, we had six before, now we have seven. And it's shown in here, the additional one is the transmission high temperature operation activated. Well, let's go back and look at the live data. Because there's no way that temperature got above 210 or 220 or whatever. It, I would think it activated like 220, well, probably 230, 240 actually but there's no way it got that hot because we were just driving around in town barely so but if you have wrong bias voltage going to it or background it's going to do all kinds of weird stuff yeah 162 degrees no that's normal that's way good switch it off key on engine off negative three start it still negative three even though it's running 304 jumped way up there and it went to 162. See it jumped way up there. There's definitely a, a voltage issue causing all these erroneous codes. And now, now we're stuck in third again. So there's definitely a voltage issue. I think that's why when it jumped up to 304 degrees, it put it in a different state too because the wrong bias voltage is going to the engine computer and or ground issue and then it jumps up high temp to 304 degrees well that is extremely high for your temperature on a transmission fluid temp so that puts it in that other mode it's doing all kinds of weird stuff so what we're going to do now is going to have to go and actually start troubleshooting some more All right, I drove it around some more. Cleared the codes again, but it keeps coming back. Um, it's very intermittent. But once in a while, when I do try to communicate, I lose COM to the PCM and to TCM, which is the same computer partitioned. I lose COM to those guys. And then the ABS lost COM to those ACM and TCM. And then the central gateway, or TIP them, totally integrated power module, lost COM to TCM and PCM. So we, I believe absolutely we have a, a power or and or ground issue going to the um, computer PCM slash TCM so that's what we're gonna have to do is pull up schematics and look at that and start scoping that out and go from there 
All right, so before we start testing some more, cleared all the codes, ran it again. We got a scan tool hooked up. We're monitoring in the transmission control module. Switch battery voltage on top and direct battery voltage. Well, they were both reading 14, 14 and a half volts. We've been driving around, hitting a couple bumps, and now it just went into limbo. We're stuck in third gear, and then the switch battery voltage is zero volts, which means then obviously it's going to throw a bunch of codes. So there is an issue. We got to find out why. So we're going to hook our DMM up and check that and go from there. All right. So now we're back pinned on a back pinned on a wire here. I'll show you on the connector for pin 19. We got zero volts. Earlier we had 12 volts. Sorry about this badass glare. So zero volts, zero volts. All right. So we got the schematics pulled up right here. Coming out of the tip on the relay, pin 19C4, that's where we're measuring at. Earlier we had 12, 14 volts, now we got zero volts when it goes in the limb mode. So we're not getting voltage to the powertrain control module, the TCM is partitioned inside of this. So we're going to have to check up here and see if we got voltage. Alright, so what we're going to check now is fuse 15, 25 amp that feeds this relay on both sides of the fuse. You can go to one side there. You can see with that glare. Good there. And he's going to go to the other side of the fuse. I didn't get on film. It's on the other side and then the other side. So fuse is getting no bolt to drop across that. But of course, we still have zero bolts going into the TCM. All right, so what we're doing now is we pulled the transmission relay out, which is right there, a five pin. We're gonna check on terminal 30 to make sure we have 12 volts coming in with the DMM. 14 volts, alternator voltage, we're good. Now, hypothetically, we gave power to 87 with a power probe. We gave it power and everything came back on a scan tool. Then we know the wire integrity of this is good for here. Wire integrity from here to here is good could be a relay issue or a control side issue so we're going to go from there next all right so what we're going to do now with that relay out pin 87 to 19 connector c4 we're going to check for continuity with the leads there to the lead there we're going to go ahead and touch it point, point 0.1.2 ohms so we're good we got good continuity that wire is not broken so what we're going to do now is check the control side of the circuit before we give this 12 volts. So we're going to go to pin 86 from the tip -um, and there should be voltage there because the other side is going to a ground. So there should be voltage there. So we're going to check that to pin 86. Go ahead on pin 86. We're going to get that set up here on DC volts. No voltage there. So now what we're going to do is check from the TCM pin 18 with the yellow and black probe there and see if we got voltage. All right, so now we're in pin 18, ground, relay out, no voltage. We should have voltage here to control that relay. So you can go to put the relay in just in case it needs a sense feedback. Put that in. Still no voltage to actuate that relay still no voltage there so hypothetically if we were to give voltage on this wire here everything would come back to normal for voltage on the DMM and in here but it looks like that the relay is not being actuated possibly from the TCM slash PCM we got to figure out why next all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to pin 87 give that 12 volts I got my DMM back in this one, C419. We're gonna watch the DMM and the scan tool. We're using our AS wave kit to jump into battery voltage with the relay out to prove that that wire integrity is good and handles the amps as well. Let's watch these screens at the same time here. The shitty ass glare. Oh, I probably shouldn't swear in here, but. We'll get that set up here next. 
All right, so now we're gonna jump 87 to battery positive. We're gonna watch the meter. Boom, 14 volts. Boom, 14 volts. That all came back, so we're good there. We're good there. So now we got 14 volts going to the TCM inside this PCM partition. But why isn't the relay closed and energized? I believe the relay is good, all the wire integrity is good, but we don't have the computer controlling to control that ground, it looks like. So if we pull that away, obviously we're going to go back to zero volts and zero volts on the scan tool. Also, the reason why this thing is in limp mode right now is because you're not, you're not getting voltage down to the TCM inside the PCM. It goes to these other solenoids to actuate the stuff. Well, we have a bunch of other solenoid codes. Well, if you're not getting power to them, it even says in the service data that you won't. You'll get erroneous codes because it's not powering those circuits up. So we got to figure out why is the TCM inside that PCM not controlling that relay? Is it because there's something wrong with the driver MOSFET transistor in this module? Or is it because there's another input that's not telling it to turn on? Or an ignition input or something like that? Alrighty, what we're going to do now is we're going to recycle power monitoring the scan tool. And this voltage here. We'll have to look at there because it's glaring pretty good. There we got voltage back, voltage is back. You can see that with the glare. But all of our voltage came back, all we did is simply turn the car off and restart it. This damn glare is bad. And all of our voltage came back, right there. Came back there. Simply from shutting it off and restarting it. All right, so what we're gonna check now to prove is we're gonna check the output from the computer C4 pin 18 because that should have voltage 12 14 volts to ground to energize the control side of the relay to ground which we do and I'll show you that which is the yellow and black wire pin 18 it's down under their yellow and black I don't know if you can see it or not but you can see it it's so hard to see with this it's in there. But anyways, we never had voltage there before to recycle power. So the PCM is giving it 14 volts now to energize that relay to get voltage. Show in the diagram. The PCM is given the voltage of the 14 volts to energize the relay to suck this over to let voltage go down, feed the TCM and feed all the solenoids so now it won't be in limp mode. But we gotta figure out why we lost voltage earlier when it should always be there. And simply we recycle power. Is it a PCM issue, TCM issue? Is it an input to that? Or is it the damn ignition switch? More to come. All right, so what we did now is we swapped the relays from one relay to the other. Not saying it's a relay issue, but we wanted to eliminate that. We've had this happen in the past before where we have key on engine off and we have no comm to the PCM and TCM because of those lines there. And you go to report, we're gonna have ABS codes now that lost come with the ECM PCM and the TIPM that lost central gateway which is the TIPM lost come with the ECM PCM so to prove that go into the PCM and again we got key on engine off so I don't think it's a relay issue perhaps it could be still but perhaps because we did swap relays and we're still having the same issue we did before we go live data probably gonna have a no com. It should have came up by now. Yeah, no com. So now we're going to take some more look into this. All right, so we started it. We had com again. We got com restored, but now we're in limp mode again. I'm moving the Prindle switch. It's not even moving. Apparently, we got some more com issues. The trans temp's on. It's not overheating. It's just because, well, it's a losing communication. The Prindle should be turning, moving, and it's not anywhere near sucking limp mode third gear. All right, so we still have no com to the TCM. But what we got now is the PCM lost come with the TCM pending and they're partitioned inside. The 700, we have the same one. That's because it turns the mill on. 
But this 1603 is active. PCM internal dual port RAM communication failure, which tells me, obviously, that it is partitioned in there and they're not talking to each other. ABS lost common with the ECM. Central gateway lost common with the ECM. ECM PCM was stored. Active, there's no comp to the TCM. So right now we have no comp to the TCM. The P1603 service data shows PCM internal issues or a fused ignition switch. So what we need to do now, I believe, is check all the connectors, the fused ignition, going to the PCM slash TCM and see what voltages we have there. According to all data, P1603, when monitored ignition on battery voltage getter in 10 volts, internal PCM failure detected, one trip fault, three good trips turn the mill off, possible causes, PCM fuse ignition switch circuit, PCM internal. Take it with a grain of salt. We're gonna check the PCM internal switch, uh, switch voltage, 11, 12, and 30, on connector one, connector one, 4.7, 11, 12, and 30. We should have 12 volts here. We wanna check that next. All right, so what we're gonna do now is C130 circuit F924, F924 pin 30, and then the other one, pin 11C1 circuit F202, pin 11F202 circuit. We're still looking for the other one in all data pin 12. What we're going to do is we're going to check because these circuits come up and feed off of that fuse. We're going to check for both to drop there and then check for a voltage drop there from the tip um, along with the other pin 12 once we find it and see if we don't have power going to one of these or if we do or we don't we know which way to go from there next. All right and the last one is C112 F1 circuit and scroll up it goes down to the tip um, fuse 36 we're going to check that one as well and we'll go from there. All right so 36 is on the other schematic showed you in all data checking both sides One side 14, the other side 14. Now he's going to go to 37. One side nothing, the other side nothing, which is 37, which is this one. I'm like all over the place with this damn wind. This one right here, we have no power going down, but now we're going to check fuse 7 since we're here. Fuse 7 should be a 10 amp. The hell, they're all 10 amps. Fuse 7 is a 10 amp. We'll check both sides of that. Fuse 7. I'm going to go to one side of 7. 14 is going to go to the other side. 14. Now we're going to go back to 37. We should have power. We have nothing on both sides. We're going to go and look at that next. All right, so we just said we had no power at 30 but we believe that's because no power there but if you look at this schematic here and you're only going to have power 30 when it's in the start position you go to one one over there is going to come down through the circuit 961 start 961 and one is start you're only going to have power when you're cranking it so that and you follow the diagram up that would seem to be correct so we got two powers here running this power no power until you start it We'll move on from there. All right, so we've recycled our power started up and now we got calm again to the TCM. So the fuses, those power, those circuit fuses on that vehicle are good. Two power, we just did it with the other circuit there. Um, right here, we cranked it over. We had 12, four, we had 12 volts when it's cranking and then it went back to zero because it's only during cranking according to that other schematic we looked at earlier for the ignition switch. Now we have calm again. So yeah, more to come. And now that PCM internal failure code also went to store because everything's back to normal just from simply recycling power. Again, we got a we got a power ground issue with wiring relay stick in, wire integrity, or we actually got a computer issue. So more to come. Alrighty, so after looking at this a lot, bunch more, wire integrity, fuses, relays, ignition switch, so far seems to be checking out good. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go into the engine computer to get the mode 9 data, perhaps to get a used module from a junkyard, 
do a special rewrite on the program since I have a Tech Authority subscription right now. And we could possibly get a computer and see if that's the issue. I'm not saying that's what we're going to do, but I want to get that mold 9 data recorded so we have it if we go down that road, um, if it is a computer. I'm not saying it is, but I want to get it just in case so we don't have to get a new computer. Because I'm sure they're a few hundred bucks. We can get a salvage one, rewrite the program. May take the computer apart, take a look at it, and check some more circuits in there. So we're going to go to ECU information. And we're going to get the mode 9 data, the alphanumeric, which is right there is the part number. So we want that part number right there. We're going to look at that. VIN's all good. We're going to make sure if we do get one, we have the right stuff. So we'll go take a look and see what we come up with. More to come. All right, so... We got a used ECM from the junkyard. This is the closest one I could find. It was off a 2006 Dodge Ram 1500 with a 4.7. I did find some other ones, but they were off Durango's and they're different. There's a tip, I might just grab it since I was there. That's the old ECM. So we got key on engine off. Right now, if you notice, I'll start it. It'll start and then it'll die. And it just dies now that could be because of a security thing what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to write the VIN and reset the skim or W or wireless control module and then do a special software update and go from there so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna auto detect this car and it's probably gonna pull the VIN off the one we just got from the salvage yard so it's not gonna match our VIN on here which it looks like it ends in Six seven four. We'll see what it shows here. Sometimes you use the BCM opposer from too, but yeah. So ours ends in six seven four. So the one it's pulling is from the junkyard truck. So we're gonna hit OK. What we want to do is we want to rewrite that VIN. It says it's a two thousand six Dakota. 1593. I'm gonna look in another spot here just to make sure. It's pretty dirty. Yeah, it's still 674. I know you can't see it in the film, but it's pulling to Dakota because it's, well, must be pulling from the BCM too. But, anyways, I'm just gonna do a real quick cold read. Which I, I, I mean, there's going to be colds. We'll just do a full system scan while that does it. I'll pause it. All right, so we got a bunch of codes because we haven't programmed nothing yet. Just to show you, PCM control, control fan circuit open, probably because that pin's being used from the old vehicle. And this doesn't have an electric fan. It's got a mechanical fan. So we got to reprogram that, and that'll get rid of that erroneous code. TCM, battery was disconnected, stored, ABS, VIN, miss. this is all a lot of old stuff from before. Anyways, yeah, VIN mismatch stuff. Well, let me show you, that was an important one right there. The VIN mismatch down here in the wireless control module, which is your key security stuff. Original VIN mismatch active. Uh, that'll probably make it not start, obviously. So what we're going to do now... We're going to go on the PCM and we're going to write the VIN and then we're going to reset the wireless control module. I know there are more parts, they call it the skin module. This is the wireless control module or WCM. We're going to go to special function under PCM. And again, remember PCM, TCM is one computer on this. Special function. So we're going to set the VIN. It's going to have the old one in here. Or not, not the old one. The one from the junkyard. It says it's valid, but we want to hit OK. We want to change it. So I'm going to type that in. Well, I'm actually my pull up. Yeah, it was this one right here. Ends in. Starts in 1D46674. Oh, that's the one. Why is it in there? It's because we scanned it with the scan tool before. So we're going to hit OK to write the VIN. 
You were verifying the yes. So VIN rate successful. So now we wrote the VIN into the computer. Let's just start it. There may or may not die again because of the wireless control module. Because it's got to learn its secret security key. Yeah, it's got to learn its secret security key. So now we're going to go back. We're going to go to the WCM. And you're going to do special function. We're going to hit PCM replaced. You got to have a pin. I already pulled a pin with my IM508, which I believe it's 3894. Hit enter. You only get three chances to make sure it's the right pin. Otherwise, it'll lock it out. There's another app you can use with your phone and a Bluetooth dongle to pull these pins on these, I think 2005, 2006 and later. Oh, it says it's the wrong one. Let me verify. All right, sorry, I read that wrong. It's actually 385 it, so PCM replaced. Three, eight, five, eight. Hopefully it's it because we only got one more chance. Well, then that locks you out. There's got I think there's a way to unlock it too. So this is just going to say show that we replaced the PCM so it relearns the pulls. Okay, pin has been programmed. So that's good. Press OK to update the PCM. Okay. VIN write successful. Now it's in the wireless control module. I know on some of the Chrysler's, maybe the older ones too, I don't know about this one, you can reset the wireless control module of the skim. It'll automatically pull the pin for you. You just try it again here and see. Nope. Let me go reset ECU. Try it again. Erase these codes and try it. All right, so now we got the, we had a starting issue there, obviously, after we reset the ECU. We're gonna reprogram it now and write the software first before we go any farther. So I'm gonna communicate with the salvage guard when we go to ECU information, see what part number we have in there. I don't trust the stickers on there because people don't always put the stickers on. So there's the ECU part number right there. I'm going to look that up in the J2534 pass through on the Chrysler website. Yeah, there's the VIN original and there's their new one we wrote. Original one we wrote. I'm going to look this up and then I'm going to do a special change to the FL file part number so we can program this. If you want to learn how to do all that, you got to go to l1training.com. All right, so we got our power supply hooked up over there. And then uh, key on engine off, J2534 box plugged in. Our fans, our files are modified. Like I said, there's a website you can subscribe to, l1training.com, and it shows you how to do that using use modules. We're going to go to our YTEC 2.0. We're going to go to our Legacy Flash app. We're going to select our VCMI. We're going to turn on. Not supposed to turn on, anyways. It hasn't turned on yet. All right, we finally got it to connect. The lights are on. We're going to hit start. It's reading part number from the PCM. Okay, it says, do you wish to update the NGC3 CAN EC part number to AI? Yes, so the old part number that's on there ends in AE, which we proved. Now we want to go to that one. So yes, we want to write this file. 
starting the flash process again this is the used junkyard one and you're supposed to have the same base part number everything but the last two digits in this one we The file you are about to flash contains multiple flash updates for the PCM and TCMs. If the flash is aborted during the process, please restart the flash procedure. Note, it is only necessary to start this flash one time in order. Okay, because it does both. Again, the base part number is everything but the AE at the end. You need to make sure that matches if you're going out of the used or of a junkyard. In this case, ours is not exactly the same, but we're going to try it anyways because we got these for $24. So it's erasing all the software now, the old files. I'm gonna pause this while it's doing its thing. The little blue bars down at the bottom. We're continuing to flash here. Well, three quarters done. All right, so it did the, it looks like it's did the ECU part. Now it's doing the TCM part. Because like I said, it's the TCM and PCM is part of one in these modules. Alrighty, it's almost done here in the blue bar on the bottom. Now it's performing checksum. It says please turn the ignition off. Hit OK. Then it should tell us to turn it on. It's still flashing right now, the PCM. Please turn the ignition on. Hit OK. It says flash process completed successfully. So it updated the computer and changed everything accordingly. All right, so after I flashed that PCM slash TCM from the salvage junkyard, it's still not gonna start the truck because the hardware in the salvage junkyard is different than the one that's originally in the truck. It's a different base part number. The last two digits, whether in an AD, AI, whatever it is, doesn't matter because you always can flash that to whatever software level you want. Uh, but the beginning, the base part number has to be correct, otherwise the hardware is a little bit different. But I wanted to show, in the next part of the video, is the live data and the codes, uh, where he's good with the salvage junkyard one because it's a good PCM. It's just the starting circuit in that PCM. It's not going to work for this truck. So we're going to actually have to get a PCM. That's what's wrong with this truck. PCM slash TCM. Again, it's the same computer, just partition. But i show that in the next part of this video. All right, so what we're going to do now is... I believe we've got a bad PCM, and I'll show you why. I'll show you some more data here. It seemed it seemed to be worse when I got warmer out, uh, and when it got cooler, it was better. But now it's actually not communicating. So that's the original PCM that was in the truck. And if you look, we have no com to the PCM and the TCM. No com, no com. That's what those dashed lines mean. The reason is. Oh, well, there's something wrong with that module there. We had a PCM internal 1603 dual RAM error code inside there. All right, so to prove it's an OCOM, obviously these two dashed lines here. But well, we're going to go into the PCM. And get, it'll probably bring up the first menu here. Once we get in, we're going to hit live data. Once it opens up. But we got a bad computer. So hit live data. We'll see if we have a no com. And it comes and goes. We'll see here. We're using the Dodge program again. Yeah, no com. So we have no com to PCM TCM. The tip them, however, sending the power out correctly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a, another computer here. Let me grab that and show you. All right, so I grabbed this one from the salvage yard. Uh, it's the same year, 06, but this is off a Ram truck with a 4.7. So I flashed it with the software for this truck from uh, Tech Authority. However, this base part number is different than the base part number on that one. So the hardware uh, inside may be a little bit different. Um, but what we're just going to prove is it's not going to start with this computer. Because there's some skim module stuff and it's just not the right computer for it. But what it will prove is, um, and since we got it so cheap, it was only 24 bucks for this thing. And I bought a few other ones too. But we can't get the exact same part number. If you can get the same exact part number, uh, like I said, I showed in other videos and stuff where you can flash it, do a special program, and flash your software in here, which we did. 
But when I plug this one in, if we have COM to it, we can read live data and stuff in codes. Then we there's another proof right there that that old computer is bad. So I'm going to unplug it. The one in the truck, put this used one in, go from there. All right, so I plugged the one in from the salvage yard that's been reflashed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to escape back out. Got can engine off again. Do a full system scan. Let's see if we got COM. Which we do. PCM COM. TCM COM. Don't worry about those codes right now. It's just proving that. These are old codes. So, now if I go in there and pause this. And I hit. Let's go to the PCM. <clears throat> Come on, pull up. What this proves is that computer's bad. Hit live data. And earlier in this video, we talk about why it's bad too, because it's not sending the 12 volts and the 1603 internal RAM code and all that stuff. <clears throat> so once this pulls up, sorry about the glare. There's all of our live data. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the original old one back in and go from there. So I plugged the old one back in. I hit live data again. We got a no com. It's intermittent, so we're still having no com. All right, so I moved the computer around, tapped on a little bit with the screwdriver. See if we got com now. I don't believe we do. Still no calm. Once in a while I can get it that I can tap on a little bit lightly and it'll actually come back with calm. So let me pause it and do it again. Alright, so I tapped on it. I started it now. got it running. We got calm with the PCM. But no calm with the TCM. Just partitioned inside of that computer again. So I want to get calm to the TCM to show you something else and go from there. All right, so if we have, we have COM to the PCM, but not COM to the TCM, which is part of that same computer, it's not gonna send the 12 volts the transmission relay control. This is the module powertrain, the PCM, TCM's part of this. This 12 volts is not gonna send it to close this relay to power up all of these solenoids and modules. Or not modules, solenoids and pressure sensors. Right now, we have an over -temp light on for transmission. That's not actual true. It's just because it's not communicating. So if I go to TCM, we have a no com. Sometimes it comes back and forth. Go to live data. We'll see if you can get any com. No com. So we have no com to the TCM inside there. Once in a while, we'll get com in there. If we move it or smack it a certain way, or not smack it, but kind of tap on it lightly. Um, and all that. Well, I got calm for a little bit. I'm in the TCM. I got in and it says NA. So I'm going to cycle power again and see if we can get calm again. Well, let me just try it again right here. Because we get calm once in a while and then we lose it. Then it would get restored and we lose it. Nothing right there. But anyways, that fourth connector on top there, that's the TCM connector for this thing. We'll try it again in cycle power. Let's try it again here, see if we get calm. We do for a little bit, and it's going to probably go to NA. We went to NA. We just lost calm. Boom. It says it's not supported because it's losing calm. So, earlier, what I wanted to kind of show you, I don't know if we'll be able to duplicate it again, but with the original computer, we lose calm like that. We lose voltage from the output state of this we lose voltage we we just tap it lightly with the screwdriver just very ever so lightly tap it very lightly just to see you know if something inside was loose and we lose calm but before we even did that it's been getting worse with the heat you could take a heat gun you could you don't want to get real hot you just kind of heat the tip them up no issues heat the computer up not very hot but heat it up a little bit you would have issues. You lose your voltage, you lose your calm, all that stuff like we talked about earlier in this video with the uh, signal going to this. 
So there's one other thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to put that other computer back in. One from the salvage yard. That's a good computer. It's just not going to work for this vehicle, but it's the same live data. We're just going to show that and what I'm talking about and go from there. All right, I got it running. Still the same old computer from the one that was in the original in the vehicle. We got calm again. What I want to show you is some voltage reading, just like we showed earlier in this video. Yeah, I just did it. That's supposed to be 14 volts. It just dropped to zero volts, which is not sending power. So that zero volts right there is not going output to this relay to close this relay. The control side, the control, the control side, the power to relay. God, can we talk? 12 volts is not going to the control side to close the power side to let voltage come through to power all the uh, solenoids and pressure sensors. So, now if you tap that PCM lightly, it'll come back, it comes and goes. Um, if you take a heat gun uh, and heat it up, it'll get worse. Uh, like I said, we heated this up before. I don't know if I talked about this in this video yet or not, but we took that heat gun. We didn't heat it up real hot, but we heated it, tip them up, no issues, heated that PCM up, not real hot, and it would act up. Put it in the freezer, it would get better. So right now, we have no voltage there. Now if I cycle the key here, turn it off, key on engine off, voltage came back. But it doesn't always come back. I don't know if it'll do it now on camera. Key on engine off, voltage come back. Key on engine off, voltage comes back. But sometimes when we get it hot enough, key on engine off, it'll actually drop all to zero when it's running or before you do it. When it gets warm in the engine bay or just vibrations from lightly tapping it. Key on engine off. So it's doing everything it needs to now wasn't just a minute ago, I just never caught it on camera. Let me heat it up a little bit to get it that way. So I get to drop to zero. There, so I heated it up with the heat gun a little bit. Key on engine off. Well, we just lost calm. It literally just said zero. We try it again. Yeah, I just started there. Zero volts. If you cycle it a few times and when a PCM goes back off, it'll come back. Zero volts. That should be at 12. I want to get it back to show you one other test I did. I'm just going to have to cool the PCM back off. This is where I could put it in the freezer and get and it's still zero. Still zero. Still zero. We have to let it cool off a little bit more. Let me go cool it off in the freezer real quick. Then I'll come right back. Alright, I pulled it out of the freezer, put it back in, and we got 14 volts. So we're back now. I'm gonna show you one other thing that we found out as well next. Alright, so if I pull this relay right here. This is going to drop to zero volts, as expected. Pull this relay. Drops to zero volts. I'm going to plug the relay back in. It should go back to alternator voltage. And it never does. Um, and I'm going to show you with the used PCM we got from the junkyard how it goes back next. All right, so I put the salvage yard one in. Again, we got can engine off. It doesn't matter if it's running or not. You should never lose this voltage right there. Now, if I pull this relay, it's going to go to zero volts. If I plug it back in, before, it would stay at zero. This time, it comes right back to voltage. And I did that with, I know I did a run in earlier in the video, but if I do with key on engine off, it's the same exact results. So that's just another proof that that ECM over there is bad. Also, I can heat the crap out of that ECM with that gun. I can smack it and nothing changes on here. Everything is good, which proves 
that the old VCM is in fact bad. So this truck needs a new computer. PCM slash TCM is in that computer. It's just partitioned in there. Again, these first three connectors are for the engine computer. This fourth one is for the uh, transmission computer. We have the back shell off just the probe, which I showed you earlier in this video. But again, just to show you one more time, we've got voltage there. If I unplug the relay, I'll unplug it, you'll see it drop to zero. I'm gonna plug it back in. And it goes right back. So the old one never did that. Same thing with the key engine off. Never did it. So absolutely needs a new computer. One more thing. Got the original ECM back in from the truck. Turn key on engine off. Still zero volts every time I do that. Once in a while it'll come back. And if you look here. Yeah, I just lost calm there. Try to cycle it again. Let me pull that up here again. Just lost calm again with it. Let me try to pull it up again. We got, we, it was pretty warm, so. Try to get calm here again. We're on and off calm, but what I want to show you, so when we have zero volts there, we're in limp in mode. So I'm gonna try to get the 14 volts back or 12 volts back and it'll go back to normal mode. Why is it limp in, limp in mode? Because it's not powering any of these pressure solenoids or solenoids themselves. And you're gonna get all these other colds as well with this. I'm gonna cycle power a few more times just to prove some more data. Well, I keep trying to get this voltage back. It comes back for a few seconds and then it goes away. But anyways, when it does come back, just lost calm there again. So when it does come back, you pull that fuse out just like we showed earlier. It goes to zero volts. When you put it back in, it should go back to uh, 12 volts, and it doesn't. So if I was to plug that old, the new computer, not the new one, the salvage junkyard one, I'll show that one more time, and I'll show you the limpin' status. Because right now, if I get everything calm, calm back coming up, it's in limpin' mode. But if I do the other one, it'll when this has good voltage, this will say, you know, it's normal. I'll show that. That'll be it for this video after I show that next. All right, so I got the salvage yard one back in. Key on engine off. And look, you got your voltage there. It says normal. So if I unplug this relay, it'll go to zero volts. Plug it back in. Go back to 12 volts. Unplug it. Zero volts. Goes back to 12 volts. And if you actually run it, it would go to a fail when they had zero volts there. So that proves 100% that this PCM on this 2006 Dodge Dakota 4.7 PCM slash TCM is bad. Need a new one of these with either this part number. You don't doesn't matter on the AD part. 56044743 or zero. 5094 0509403 don't care about the ag because we can use tech authority to flash whatever software we want in there so it needs a new engine slash tcm computer and that'll fix this truck so that is it for this video